Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Why, hello, 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 Internet. Welcome. It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That means here on Ready Check Radio, it's time for the Gaming Gumbo, our weekly gaming wrap-up show. We're doing the show live, of course, twitch.tv slash readycheckradio. If you're watching later on YouTube, listening on Spotify, Audible, Amazon, any of those podcast providers, thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Give it a thumbs up. Throw a review in there. Feed the algorithm and let us know your picks for the Game Awards. We're going to cover some of that today. I'm Mike Byrne, your host, as always. Chat, hanging here with me, getting ready to go. Do have to say, next week, Thanksgiving here in the United States. So uh, while there is no Torchwick stream tonight, uh, some travel going to and from school, and um, Tar- Tark will be streaming tonight, there will not be any Relic Grind next week or Gaming Gumbo. Everybody will be off for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for Thanksgiving week. We hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with all of your friends or family. And if you don't celebrate, enjoy the weekend hanging out with uh, with some friends. Play a board game. Play a board game. Play a card game. Joining me with a lot to go over today, including the aforementioned Game Awards 2022, he's back, the one, the only, Jason Winter. What's up, sir? And I thought you were already give thanks for not having to deal with me for another few months, but no, here I am. Here you are. I did. I, your holidays. I got the Discord message that said, hey... Whenever those nominations come out, I'd be willing to do a gaming gumbo a prediction show. I got, got a spreadsheet, spreadsheet ready. It's ready. been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. So we'll go through, pick a few categories, seven or so, give our predictions, sure to go wrong, chat, throw yours in there as well. Here to do them with us and see if he can take the throne for the 2022 awards, Mr. Troy Blackburn, the noob fridge himself. What's up, sir? A man who also enjoys prediction shows. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to this. He was very excited. Uh, he was very excited. I looked at my spreadsheet, and the last time we did this was for the Hall of Fame games, and it was the same yeah. three of us. Yeah, it was the same three of us. And we did well. We I, we did well, if I remember right. It was a close one, too, as far as who won. But generally, yeah. we did really well. Yeah. Let's see if we do as well. Jeff Keighley, of course, announcing the Game Awards, which will air on December 8th. 2022 so about two weeks a little over uh, maybe three uh, uh, three weeks from now we have the nominees in though there's what one two three four five six seven eight times three is 24 29 categories wait no that's not right 24 it says uh, zero 31 votes 31 it yeah it's 31 category i'm not on that page that's why i'm i'm at the no. like key where you just click which ones you want to do category one of 31 so So we're going to go through and give some nominees and uh there's also a couple in here that i want to point out and just laugh at of course gentlemen let's start with game of the year the biggie the big dog the one likely not to be revealed until late in the evening here are your choices a plague tale requiem which i happen to know that our own uh friend zach sharps just recently finished. I think he finished it today uh, and loved this some of the This would not be narrative. Zach's vote. This I know what his favorite is. I know what his favorite on here is, too. <laughs> but it, it, but he did enjoy Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, Elden Ring. God of War Ragnarok, which I'm kind of surprised to actually see on this list. Only because, like, technically it did meet the date release deadlines. But only by, like, a couple of days. <laughs> like, and Boom. God of, uh, God of War, Game of Year. We'll see. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which I will say, I honestly thought Xenoblade was going to get the shaft in a, on a bunch of a nominations. There's it, those kind of like really well done uh, RPGs kind of get hidden a little bit. I'm glad that it's at least getting the nod. Doesn't mean I think, I think it'll win, but we'll see. Uh, Noob Fridge, we'll start with you. Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. What do you think of the nominees, and who's taking it home? 
As much as uh, God of War Ragnarok got really good pre-release uh, coverage and a lot of positive things were said about that, uh, I have believe since the release back in, I believe it was February, that this is Elden Ring's to lose this year. I think uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's made the biggest impact. It had the biggest following. It was everywhere uh, when when the game released. Still get, gets played everywhere. So I'm going with Elden Ring this year for Game of the Year. Going with Elden Ring. God of War Ragnarok on the PlayStation 5 still maintaining that Metacritic score from critics of 94 and with over 4,000 user reviews, an 8.4. So I, I don't think, and we've talked about it on this show, Nobody doubts how good the game is, if that's your type of game, but I'm still surprised to see it here, even though it did technically meet the date guidelines, Jason. Well, well, you gotta. What is what is the deadline? It's like if it's not this year, and then it have to be on next year, and then it's already a year old. Whatever the date was, right? They but they have done that before, where they have not accepted a game uh, because yeah, well, it was know. close to the show, and then it got the shank, the the shaft last the the following year, so. And they weren't going to do. They weren't going to do that to God of War. I totally get so, it. Sony paid enough Doritos and right. do to Jeff Keighley to get it on here. So whatever. <laughs> what do you think it of the actually, nominees? It is kind of a shame. Also, Elden Ring is here because I'm, I'm voting for that because of course I am. But if it wasn't, I feel like Ragnarok and Forbidden God of War and Horizon Forbidden West would be like a really good. That'd be a really competitive thing. Like, I would not know who to pick between those two, but. Oh, I, I think God of War would dominate Horizon. Horizon, great game. Absolutely great game, but I just think it gets absolutely dominated by the the power that is the God of War franchise right now. Maybe. And yeah, Zach wants Stray to win. Stray would be yeah, like upset material. I, w I would love to see it win. Stray and Xenoblade would both be upset, and even Plague Tale to some degree. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And Xenoblade Chronicles, I would love to see win, but hell, I'm just happy it got a nod. And uh, they're it, just happy to be here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we're just we're just happy, so happy to be here. You know, there, there was be, one, to be nominated. Yeah. There was one that I really thought would be in this lineup that isn't. I really kind of expected to see Cult of the Lamb in this lineup. Really? Yeah, uh, that, that game's made a huge impact. I, I kind of thought that it would sneak in, but I can see why God of War Ragnarok is in there instead. But I really thought Cult, Cult of the Lamb had a shot to make this category. Gents, it's really hard to argue with Elden Ring. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, don't, I th don't play the bull my heart. Don't, I think this, it, I think this is definitely a coin flip between Elden Ring and God of War. I don't think anything else even uh, realistically stands a chance. And that's just putting two names up there for a little uh, competition. I don't think this is actually a challenging category that where the voting is going to be close. Yeah. I know you guys are both going Elden Ring. Uh, I'm gonna go Elden Ring as well. I just think okay. it's. I, I agree with you, Troy. It's. I think it's theirs to lose. Yep. I, I honestly think it's theirs to lose. Uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, remember you can go vote for your nominees. You are only a fraction of the actual vote. This is not a popularity contest as much. Well, yeah, it is. But I'm it's. About to say, it, this it's, is. <laughs> yeah. It's not a popular. It's not a a um, popular vote decision making thing. Best game direction, obviously we see some overlap in these categories in when you're talking about these top you know, main uh, awards. Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and we sneak Immortality into the mix. So this is outstanding is. creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Uh, Jason, we'll let you go first this time. What was, what was that game that won every award that one year at the Game Awards? We were just like, oh, that again. That was like three years you ago. You think that's going to be what happens with Elden Ring again? I feel like it is. I mean, I look at God. Of, yeah, again, I look at God of War and Horizon. I'm like, yeah. Although, creative design, innovation, and, and you know what? Uh, Lord Josh Allen's tweets about Stray about how disappointed he was by it. How they they didn't. It just happened to be a kitty in an adventure game. Like he was like. It, was, it could have been so much better if you would have had to like know how to do stuff better than having it all explained to you by your little computer friend. Right. That's what that's what knocks that off of this list for me. But yeah, I feel like this one's going to be Elden Ring as well. I just think it did create outstanding creative vision, innovation, and game design. Yep. I mean, yeah, I I, just, I have a hard time thinking that the other ones were that much above and beyond to take it out of this. Troy, what do you got? Is this Elden Rings to lose as well? 
Uh, as much as uh, God of War Ragnarok sort of, I, I think, has a, a bigger chance in this one probably because the the way they do their direction, the way they do the, like kind of the one shot, you know, throughout the entire game, I think is a really is a really nice way to present a game. I, I think, man, almost everything to Elden Ring is in is Elden Ring's to lose at this point. Um, they kind of took a souls like and kind of took it to the next level, really. So I'll go with Elden Ring in this one as well. Yeah, I mean, creative vision and innovation in game direction and design for me as good as God of War Ragnarok is, and I haven't personally played all the way through it yet. But as good as the reviews indicate and the streaming numbers and everything seem to indicate that it is, it is more God of War. Um, if you like the last one, you will probably like this one. Uh, and yes, I would actually argue that last the last God of War was probably more innovative in the God of War franchise than this one is, uh, simply because this follows the mold of the, the, the last one that innovated on the, the formula a little bit. Horizon Forbidden West, I mean, it's hard. For me, it's hard to give sequels like innovation, right? Unless they just totally do something different, they're just capitalizing on success, rightfully so. They have every right to do so. I'm not disparaging them for doing it. Mm. Telling a new story, building on the successes they've had in the past. I don't really see that as innovative. Stray is a fun platformer, but nothing innovative. Immortality, solid. I think when you look at the innovation in game direction and design portion, you have to think Elden Ring, right? This was not just, hey, we're going to drop another Souls game. This was a com a complete like reorganization and reimagining of a Souls game. I'm gonna go Elden Ring too. I mean, we're, we're probably gonna all be tied by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so now you get to best narrative, and I think this one has uh, more of an argument for some other things. Again, we see in best narrative, Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring. God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and Immortality. This is where I think the God of War shines through, the God of War franchise. And I think there's even an argument to be made here for Horizon Forbidden West from a narrative perspective, too. And I know Zach really likes Plague Tale Requiem, and I'm not saying any of these don't deserve to be here. Elden Ring's narrative is very cool, but the way that narrative is delivered, you really have to like souls games and be willing to go find all the bits all the bobs throughout the place and when i think best narrative i'm almost looking for which would make if i was not holding the controller which of these would i sit there and watch which of these would i watch jason stream if i had no intention of playing uh, just to see jason and him experiencing the story and i think i gotta lean a little more to god of war on this one and I'm, i may be wrong but I think I'm going to lean, I'm going to go with God of War, Jason. Hang on, got to write that down. <laughs> got to write down the one I'm definitely getting wrong. <laughs> and I think you're wrong. Do you really? Uh, but I agree with you in the sense that I agree with something like Elden Ring. I can't vote for like an open world RPG sandbox where you make your own character. I can't vote for that as a, a best narrative, best story. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Not Not Elden Ring for this one. But in terms of when you say that, when you say that same thing, like, what would you want to watch as a streamer? I've watched people play God of War. I've watched them play both games, and they're they're okay, but I just get so wrapped up in the action of them that I, I kind of miss out on the story, I feel like. They're very good action games. I am going to vote for a Plague Tale Requiem, because I think it does. I don't I think, I don't the, think I that's crazy. I don't think that's I crazy. Played the, I haven't played the second yeah. one, but I played the first one, and that had a great narrative. Yeah, I don't think really you're not. story, great characters. So I, I definitely want to go for a Plague Tale. I hope that sweeps. hope that takes a little bit of the mini upset there. What you got, Troy? This could be the first category where we all actually differ. I definitely agree with you on Elden Ring's narrative. The Souls-like games, it's not that they don't have any narrative, but you can definitely play it as a boss battler, you know, go from fight mm -hmm. to fight. Uh, you you have to go looking for any true narrative along the way and really make a point to pick it out, but it, it is there to get picked out. Uh, this time around, my Horizon Forbidden West, man, I would like to think that this is one that it picks up, but I don't think it's going to. Uh, my heart wants to vote for a Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, a great storyline going there. But I think Cult of the New comes through on this one. I think God of War Ragnarok comes away with this award. All right, so we haven't 
pick the category where all three of us differ yet. But we have started now shaking up the scores. <laughs> shaking up the scores. Uh, let's go to Games for Impact. Uh, this is thought-provoking, pro-social meaning, messaging, stuff like that. We've got memoir, a memoir blue, As Dusk Falls, Citizen Sleeper, Endling Extinction is Forever, Hindsight, and I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Now, this would be a category that you'd be forgiven if you haven't played all of them or were even familiar with all of them because it is... Usually we see more indies on this uh, in this category than anything else. Jason, you're laughing. What do you got? I've played one of them. <laughs> Is it the one you're voting for? I think I have to because I've never <laughs> even heard of the other five. <laughs> Although I really I don't feel like As Dusk Falls had like a thought provoking pro social message. I mean, there was a little bit about someone wanting to commit suicide in it, but and I thought it was a nice game, but I don't know that it was socially relevant it's like but i don't know what any of these other things do annapurna usually makes good games maybe i should go with that one just because annapurna i feel stupid oh they have two games here damn it yep you'd have to flip uh, a coin on that one their memoir a memoir blue in hindsight i'll go with as dusk falls then fine i, I don't know what i'm <laughs> Ta doing. taking the one you know what do you got yeah, Troy? i guess <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to go with the only one that I've heard of. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to say on, on many of these, not familiar with many of these. I'm definitely more of a mainstream gamer these days, um, but I'm going to go with a memoir blue. Yeah, see, I try and shake it up with the categories. I mean, any yeah. show can just take the regular can categories. Can we both Ring? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with can Hindsight. I'm going to go with Hindsight. Uh, right. Team Hindsight and we're Annapurna. All gonna be wrong. Yeah, oh, we're all 100% oh, yeah. going to be wrong. But I'm going to go with hindsight. Uh, let's hit best ongoing. So this is like your live service games, right? Um, <laughs> and this is where I start to just go, really? Really? Last year's nominees for best ongoing game. Last year's. Mm -hmm. Were Final Fantasy XIV. That's also on the list for this year. Apex Legends. That's also on the list for this year. Call of Duty Warzone, which is not on the list this year because Warzone 2 just came out and missed the deadline. <laughs> Fortnite, which is on the list for this year. And Genshin Impact, which is on the list for this year. So four out of five of this year's nominees were nominated last year in this same category. The only thing that changed... Warzone left, and they put Destiny 2 in the category. Weird, because Destiny 2 was here last year. I, you know, I'm just saying it was here last year. Warzone 2, having just released, misses the date. So I guess, yeah, sure, why not? Four out of five. What, what, what won last year? Must have been Final Fantasy right? 14. Yeah, it was Final Fantasy yeah. 14 they that won. They just had their big expansion, so at, it was sort of like... At the time, game. yeah, they had just no had brain, Endwalker yeah. drop. Um... That means if I got to go this year, I think I got to go with Genshin Impact. I don't think they're... I would love them to give it to Final Fantasy XIV again this year, but I think the expansion helped. Genshin Impact has just, like, continued to... And I know it lost last year to Final Fantasy XIV, but I think they've just continued to build and build and build. And while I personally don't play it, um, it's, it's hard to argue with just how much money that is making Hoyoverse. Heart says Final Fantasy fourteen. Jason, I'm taking the brain pick this time though, and I'm going to go wow. with Genshin Impact. What do you think? Who are you? I know, I right? I've changed since you haven't been on these shows. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, honestly, since even even as soon as you announced the category, as soon as I looked at the list of things, I was like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for Genshin. Not just so it's not just that I'm copying you, but I, I kind of agree the same thing. It's just like none of the other ones had that big big moment this year. I feel like so. Sure. Let's go with Genshin. Let's go with the strong, solid competitor in Genshin Impact. What do you think, Troy? Yeah, there's other games that are not on this list that had bigger moments this year, I think. 
than some of the ones on li this list, but I'm with everybody else. I think it's Genshin Impact. I think it's their year. I think they've just continued to produce content. I, I don't play the game. I don't care for the game. It's not for me, and that's okay. That It's for a lot of other people, and a lot of other people play it and love it. <laughs> yeah, Tarkov saying the expansion was after the nominations. Yeah, the expansion physically released after the nominations. Yes, you're right. Let's not pretend that it wasn't well known for months and months beforehand exactly what was in that expansion and the fact that the expansion was then delayed too as well. So let's not pretend that N. Walker wasn't a factor there because the dates were a little off. Let's go to best community support. You nominees this year. Is there any? Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. And if you want me to uh, say something, these are the exact same nominees from last year. <laughs> uh, this is recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency and responsiveness, inclusion of social media activity, and game updates patches. Here's the thing. All five of these were 2021's nominations. It is the exact same nominations from last and year. Four out of five are the same as the best ongoing game. And this says right. it includes media, game, acti game updates and patches. Isn't that what a best, isn't what an ongoing game is about? Right. Best community support last year, if you don't remember, this was another category that Final Fantasy XIV took home. So I think the only way you can look at this one logically is. Did Final Fantasy XIV stop doing what it did last year to a degree that you would hold it against them? Or did any of the other four start doing something to a degree that should bump them up? I have to answer both from covering all of these all year on MMO Bomb. I've got to say no and no, which means Final Fantasy XIV takes it. I think that's the way it's got to go. Am I nuts, Troy? You know, they, they really need to get somebody on this panel <laughs> choosing these games more familiar with the, the sort of the online aspect of these games. Uh, having all these the same nominees as last year, especially with some of those not making huge impacts in the past year at all. Uh, nothing big coming out really for any of them or, or, or a big patch or anything like that. Nothing big changing. It's, it, it's time to get somebody in who understands the online gaming aspect uh, of this genre a lot more. Uh, I'm going to have to just go with No Man's Sky kind of for the same reason that I went with uh, Genshin Impact. Uh, just for years and years of quality content, uh, quality updates, good communication with their fans. Uh, I think it's this year for them to take this award. I am voting for No Man's Sky because of some of the stuff they did this year. They had a, a really a couple of really big uh, expansions this year, a couple of big updates that I played when I was uh, doing it uh, over the summer. So yeah, I think, and I think there may be something to be said for them putting it on here. Like maybe there's a reason for that. Like they recognize the stuff that they did this year. It was on there last year. Didn't you say that wasn't? No, that was this one, category, wasn't, all five exactly are the, the same. same. Yeah. They're, they're identical. Right. Well, anyway, and that's I why care. I couldn't, I because I do want to give No Man's Sky for credit. You know, uh, Sean is still, never forget that the dude lied to you heavily when that game came out. Just because it's better now doesn't mean he didn't lie. Very true. Yeah. He, he did. It is much better now. And I do want to give him credit for that. But it was also much better last year. And it wasn't enough to win. And they didn't do enough this year that I yeah, think. Yeah, but to... I played it this year. So yeah. there, you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, Jason, you're taking six. No Man's Sky. Yes, also. Okay. Well. How many have we done so far? We've done six. Six. All right. So, let's get three more in here. Let's go with best action game, not action adventure game, because that just shares a bunch of titles with some of the, 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 you know, the gods of war categories and stuff like that. Let's go with best action game for the best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat. And Troy, I'm going to let you go first. Bayonetta three voice acting kerfluffle aside, <laughs> call of duty, modern warfare two, as in modern warfare two, not war zone. Uh, Neon White, Sifu, and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. What do you got, Troy? You know, you've always got the big Call of Duty title thrown in here. And, and you know, you think if this was just a pure popularity contest, they would probably want run away with it. Luckily, it's not. Uh, hopefully, 
Uh, we've got some folks who have a little bit of common sense. I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge was, it was a fantastic so game. much fun, man. It's something I really, really enjoyed. Uh, but Sifu, I've heard a lot of good things about Sifu, and I think this is a category that it can walk away with an award. It's not the only one that it is uh, nominated in, and I think this is their opportunity to walk away with one. I'm going to go to Jason next, and I'm going to make a prediction on Jason's prediction. I I wow. think Jason's going to go Sifu as well. I know that you you are kind of enamored with that, or were for a period. Yeah, it wasn't until I saw people play it. <laughs> uh, so, therefore... I, I agree that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge looks it was like a really fun so game. So much fun. That. I thought that looked a whole lot better. So I think that's 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 my vote. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Nice. Yep. Nice. All right. T- or Tent, as Havoc would call yeah. it. <laughs> I would love to see Teenage TMNT. Teenage Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I would love to see Tent. TMNT take it. It was such a throwback, but really well done in a modern like uh, control scheme and performance. Yep. So much fun. I love it. Love jumping into it. I'm gonna go but, Bayonetta three. Yep. Yeah, I gotta go Bayonetta three. The the Wait, action we, we in the Bayonetta the best, series the best, is the best drama at game. Yeah, the Bay, the Bayonetta series just got has some great action. You know, I understand that it's not a franchise that's for everybody with some you know hyper sexualized content and and things like that. But as far as an action game, it's hard to beat. Watch Call of Duty. Ninja, if Ninja Turtles wins, I will be more than happy to be wrong about this Me too. category. Me too. Watch Call of Duty fucking take it. Uh, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go with best role-playing. Uh, of course, we see Elden Ring hit this category again. But then we have Live Alive from Square Enix, Pokemon Legends. Uh, what is it? Arceus? Ar- hey, I think it's a key. Case, Arceus. 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 Okay. Whatever. I, I don't know. I'm not a huge you know Pokemon guy. Uh, Triangle Strategy and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Jason, I'll He's let you Mike, go first. Hard time with this. Here's it's the thing. You love. For the best game design with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. What? No, it doesn't. Well, I guess it could, is what they're saying, that they could oh, nominate an MMO here. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah, okay, whatever, whatever, Jeff. What do you what do you got, Jason? <laughs> it's a category that Elden Ring is nominated in, so yeah. Best art, best role playing game, yeah, it's Elden Ring. Go go ahead, Troy. Uh, I'm gonna stray from the uh, the Church of the no Elden Stray Ring is here. not a nominee. I'm going to go with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Oh, I believe I believe there's just uh, more better progression in that I'd, game. I'd love to see you right. Kind of go along with the category description. I'd love to see you be right, but I think you're smoking crack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live alive. I would love to see win, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's a remake. I don't think Pokemon Legends sneaks in there. You know, it, yeah, it's it's an RPG, but it's been around forever and. You know, they're kind of mediocre, middle of the ground uh, games lately. Triangle Strategy, I, I, that's a tremendous game. But when we're talking about like rich character customization, that doesn't come to mind. That gives me Elden Ring and Xenoblade. I loved both. I got to go Elden Ring. I, I, Troy, I would love for you to be right. I would love for you to be right, but I don't think I you are. Because I want to be right. I think um, award shows have a tendency to try to spread the love a little bit in some of the lesser categories, so I'm kind of banking on that a little bit. Nah. I don't think best role playing is like one of the lesser categories. Like, I, I don't know. Okay. Most anticipated will be our final one here. Uh, Breath of the Wild sequel thing. I haven't looked. At the, I haven't even looked at the options yet. But that's there every year. <laughs> <laughs> Most anticipated, recognizing an announced game. Announced that they have put in there this year. Oh, now, now, now they, they add it. Yeah. Oh, God. That Jeez, has demonstrably try. illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4, Starfield, or The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Are you still sticking with Legend of Zelda, Jason? Yep. Easy peasy. <laughs> Troy? Oh man, this one's a little tough for me. Uh, I'm I'm kind of stuck between Final Fantasy uh, 16 and Legend of Zelda. I think I'm gonna go Legend of Zelda. That's been a big anticipated thing for a very long time. So let's go Legend of Zelda. 
So last year we did have the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel in here. And then we also had Starfield. Before, yeah. <laughs> we also had Starfield in here as well. So two games do make a return here. Uh, obviously, Square Enix and Final Fantasy 16, big fan. But honestly, I don't think that while that is certainly anticipated, I don't think by the definition of this category, it comes even close to it. It's going to be an RPG in a very Final Fantasy Crystals way, except the combat's going to be Devil May Cry. And everything I've said there doesn't push the gaming medium forward it molds Final Fantasy more to what they think is going to be a modern-day audience. So I don't think that does anything. Resident Evil 4, as good as I'm sure that remake will be, Resident Evil 4 already pushed the gaming medium forward. I don't expect its remake to do anything along those front. Legend of Zelda, I, it's super anticipated, no doubt, but it falls in the same, you're going to get more of what you got in Breath of the Wild with a few new features. So now I'm at Hogwarts Legacy and Starfield. And that's a terrible place to be. Like, <laughs> like just looking at those, I'm like, Legend of Zelda probably wins this. But I'm going to go with Starfield. I'm going to go with Starfield. I think any one of these besides Resident Evil 4 has a shot. I'd even put Final Fantasy 16 as having a distant shot. If they stick to the definition, I think it has to be between yeah. Hogwarts and Starfield. I don't I think have you're relying too much on that. I know. I don't have faith yeah. that they're going to stick to the definition. So I'm going to pick Starfield, but I'm going to asterisk that Jason and say Zelda probably wins this because they're not sticking to the definition. But my my vote will be Starfield. I would I'd definitely consider it Starfield, honestly. I definitely consider Hogwarts Legacy a contender. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Game. You know I mean that was my last two. I had to pick from those yeah. two. Final Fantasy 16. You really think 16? I mean, it's super anticipated, but if they go by the definition, there is nothing I've seen about 16 that makes me go, that's very innovative. That's pushing gaming forward. No, it's, you know, we're going to tell an RPG story in a very 14, Final Fantasy 14 way with some Devil May Cry stylized combat. Okay, cool. I'm all for it, but it doesn't push Honestly, anything it's, forward. It's not 1998 anymore. Final Fantasy mainline game just isn't the big thing that everybody's looking forward to anymore. It just feels like, I don't know. It's, I feel like they like appeal. They appeal one. to the Final Fantasy audience, but yeah, I don't yeah, know, but that's again not as many as. Do they really people. drag in as big of an outside audience as yeah. as, as they used right. to? All right, there's our picks. Lock yours in in the comments, gents. We are coming up on the end of the year here. We've got about a month and a half left. Um, we've got some releases, not as many as the the year was shaping up to be. A lot pushed into 2023. But we do have some releases coming up, so I want to see if there's anything you're particularly looking forward to. I mean, Jason, we got on the MMO front, obviously, World of Warcraft Dragonflight comes out later this <laughs> month. We've got Warhammer 40k Darktide, sure. with Tro with which Troy and I have already been playing in the, the pre-order beta. Looking into December, obviously, you all know, December 2nd, Callisto Protocol. Yes, I will be streaming it on this channel. I can't wait uh, for that. We do have some like Dragon Quest Treasure stuff coming out for the Switch, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for the, the next generation consoles at the end of December, uh, Biohazard Resident Evil 7 going to the Switch, Valkyrie Profile coming for the PS4 and 5. There are a few titles out here, a few key titles out here. Troy, I know you're watching one or two of these, and I could name them, but I'm going to let you do it. Uh, one that's been delayed <laughs> that just keeps pissing you off. What are you looking forward to in this last month and a half as we close out 2022? Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, is definitely a game that is on my radar. I've got to I've got to play the PC version of the uh, the Spider-Man game itself first before I jump into Miles Morales. I want to play that one first, uh, but I'm definitely looking at that one. That's definitely on the wish list. And now, gonna that be came out what yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Um, and then we've got, of course, everything right now is Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. That's, yeah, that's my life. That is all my friends are playing right now. That's that's all that's going on in my Discord is Warhammer 40k. That is the most busy chat in the Discord that I play in. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as what got rolled over to next month, by the time we get to hopefully the next show, uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns will be rolling around. There and I'll be jumping into that. There and, uh, it is. You've been waiting and, for that forever. All of a sudden, my life will be split between Warhammer 40K and Mar Marvel Midnight Suns. Looking forward to anything, Jason? Looking forward to Crisis Core? 
I know you've been playing the Final Fantasy remake. You did that on stream a while ago. You want to do some Crisis like Core? Years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Not, there's nothing here that's like that big release. I think the big release, the last one of the year, was God of War. Like in terms of like, because every year it seems like there's something around like early, early to mid November, and then it's just kind of whatever the rest of the year. Like two years ago was Cyberpunk, and then this year it's a God of War, and it's like. I agree. I'm also kind of interested in Dark Tide too. I haven't watched some streams of it and so forth. It's a lot of fun, I just, dude. Yeah, I just it's a little buggy here and there, it. though. Still, as they, oh, I see. I watched someone play last night. He crashed a desktop like yeah. two or three times. So I have too. Have you, Troy? Have I, you crashed? No, not so far. Uh, I definitely have friends who have though. Yeah, I've crashed, and when I'm, you I'm when I like open up the before. weapon shop, sometimes nothing's in there, and I have to back out and open it again, and it's there. Or yeah. I'll open it, and it's. The, the shit that I can buy is flickering and I can't buy anything. <laughs> I got to back out and back in. Between it basically being a beta and me not having a regular group to play with, that's that was always what's keeping me from it. But yeah, I mm-hmm. wish... Don't let the second one keep you from it because it, it is pretty enjoyable with randos, at least so far. Again, these are people that pre-ordered yeah. the game and are looking forward to it, so... I'm not, I'm not I'm not paying forty bucks for a game I play with randos. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I Troy and I will play I'm with you. On it's groups of four. Them. You we got three right here, dog. Yeah. Uh and I did have in the show notes because I had show notes done for last week's show, but then Troy uh or not Troy, uh Dom's PC started acting up like an hour before the show. Uh so we we canceled. I did have notes in here on like everything that was going on with Twitter, particularly where it crossed over into like people impersonating Nintendo of America and stuff. I don't really want to talk about Twitter, and I don't think no, you guys do either. I, yeah, really they they shut off the blue check marks, so you can't do the fun stuff that they were doing, <laughs> making Mario give people the finger, and it wasn't really Mario. But let's talk about some miscellaneous news. <laughs> So, Jason, you and I over the last two years have talked quite a bit on this show and on uh, the Always Online podcast about the Epic and Apple lawsuits and how they just continue to drag on. What's lesser known by many people, but we have talked about, is the same types of lawsuits going on all over the world between Epic and Google for the same type of uh, payment processing uh, type allegations. Well... (laughs) It came out in some unredacted paperwork this week in the Epic Google fights that Epic is claiming Google paid Activision $360 million to not develop a a competing mobile store when Activision was planning to do so. Further, Epic also claims that there were other deals although smaller in monetary uh, compensation to teams like Riot Games to stop them from making a League of Legends standalone mobile platform. And they they named a bunch of other category, uh, companies that apparently benefited from what Google calls Project Hug. <laughs> Project Hug. 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 It's not so nice. Here's 360 million to not make a completing Android mobile app store application. Activision, by the way, says this is utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. That hasn't stopped Tim Sweeney from going off on Twitter, though, Jason. I mean, that, 360 million, that's about what you'd have to pay to uh, uh, handle Bobby Kotick's uh, severance, right? True. Like True. 250, 300, something like that. I don't know. Do you you think it happened? Let me see. I I didn't read through this whole article. It's like, I just was like, what even, whatever. Uh, Google has called it baseless and full. Yeah. Who actually, who actually says this? Who is actually, where is it? Where's the data coming from? It's coming from the actual court filings that Epic filed so it's epic Epic, making these accusations yeah they're just saying this in their court filings they They did not they they did not in the in the unredacted paperwork show uh source material or discovery data yeah they didn't they didn't show their work (laughs) so tim sweeney's high again that's how it feels to me (laughs) but there was probably some deal of some kind or whatever involving something but probably not the exact laser focus let's screw over epic thing that tim sweeney thinks it is 
He thinks everything is out to screw Epic. He thinks yeah, that I if don't. I go in the other room and blow my nose, I'm screwing over Epic somehow. Well, <laughs> only if you charge him 30% of that nose blow. Only if you charge him 30%. Yuji Naka got arrested. We've talked about him on the show before. Uh, and on more importantly, or more often, on the Relic Grind, when we talk about uh, Balan's Wonder World and, and Sonic and stuff. Yuji Naka, Sonic creator. He was arrested this past week. Uh, we covered him previously when he was teeing off on Square Enix on his Twitter account. <laughs> but now he's actually being arrested for insider trading uh, from the Securities and Exchange Surveillance Commission, not to be confused with America's SEC. This is Japan's Securities and Exchange Surveillance Com Commission. It's not just him either. They are arresting a few different people saying that they engaged in insider trading by finding out that Dragon Quest Tact Mobile was being created through partnership with Square Enix and uh, Aiming, a company called Aiming. And when they found that out, they bought stock in Aiming prior to the game being announced publicly. So, yeah. Yuji Naka, Sonic creator, arrested Troy for inside. If if true, the definition of insider trading. Yeah, I'm like one hundred percent. Like, couldn't be more textbook. Yeah. I think the penalty for this is that he is no longer known as Yuji Naka, Sonic creator, Yuji Naka, Balan Wonderworld creator. From yeah, now <laughs> from now on. That, is, that is what he. That's the stone. That's the millstone he carries around his neck for the rest of his life. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, poor Yuji Naka. And the thing is, by the way, like the dollar amounts, you're like, why? Like, <laughs> come on. So, I mean, he had to make it money somehow because his video game wasn't doing it. He he, he bought 10,000 shares for 2.8 million yen. And that sounds like a big number until you realize it's yen. That's $20,000. Yeah, $20, <laughs> no, wait a second. It says, uh, oh, another suit. Oh, it's other people. Uh, what does it say here? Well, there's there's others involved. This is just Naka's. Oh, just Naka. Oh, yeah, he had. Naka. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah not, I mean, he he went in for twenty k. He was like, yeah, I got twenty k on this. Like, why? Why? Other employees did more, like up to yeah, yeah. I see. You know, three hundred thirty, like yeah, two three hundred thirty million or three hundred thirty six thousand dollars, and like, yeah. yeah, they were much more involved. Yuji Naka was like, yeah, I got twenty k to throw at it. Oh shit, I'm going to jail. <laughs> going to jail over 20 over 20k <laughs> over 20k uh saints row i don't know if you guys know troy it didn't do very well the the saints don't row say. <laughs> saints row remake did go sure well. it did they said right there they said in the statement <laughs> it didn't it performed in line with management expectations uh, yeah i'm sure it did i'm sure, sure it did, did. Embracers, uh, embracer revealed their uh, latest financials hey their mmos are doing really well in fact, Lord of the Rings Online, by the way, through Daybreak is just is doing really, really well compared to where it's been over the past few years. Uh, but Saints Row, not so much. It performed, quote unquote, in line. And so now they're going to make Volition report to Gearbox, <laughs> which means now Gearbox, Jason, has Volition under it. It has Perfect World Entertainment under it. Like everybody just gets shoveled under Randy Pitchford. I was gonna say those poor that bastards. Like they're gonna have to work for Randy now. <laughs> like, I was say getting shoveled under Randy Pitchford sounds like some sort of I don't know where, where you for the corner of the internet you find that. Gross, gross. I'm gonna take out the composition drama. Uh, there's like, uh, have you been watching that the whole Doom thing and Bethesda and the composer no, from Doom Eternal? I, I thought he was. Oh. Full, I thought he was also high on himself. Did you really? Honestly, I mean, Bethesda yeah. basically tweeted out and they were like, "This is all bullshit," and we got the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they 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 sounded like they they didn't show it, but they sound like they are prepared to show their work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to show their work. So you've been watching it, Troy? Like, are you on, on Bethesda side? I was just, side, I was just catching up on it in the show notes. Yeah, it's a it's a mess. It's a mess. Control Two is in development for PS Five though, and uh, PC and Xbox Series S and X. I'm excited about that. I loved Control. Did you guys play through it? No, I haven't played no, it. No, I didn't. Oh, Control's so good. I think I, I watched you play a little bit of it, and that was all. Yeah, when it came out on PC, I wanted to check the performance, and so I think I streamed it on, on here one, once or twice. 
I absolutely love that game narratively. I, I just like I'm into occult shit like that. And then sad news this past week, Jason. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah, Kevin Conroy passed away. The iconic voice of Batman going back to the uh, animated series from the 90s and then through uh, a lot of video games, basically all the video games through the years, all the Batman Arkham games and so forth. Like this is the voice of Batman to, to me. Yeah, in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, this was and, and this was Batman. Ask, growing who is up. your Batman? And they're they're talking like West, Keaton, uh, Bale, you know, people like that. I always answer Conroy like that. That's my Batman. Did you see the photo I tweeted out? No, I don't. Yeah. Did I? I don't think so. No, oh, well, yeah, you got to get this on the show, man. All right, well, toss right. it I over to me. I should I should have mentioned this. Oh, here, let me just go to your Twitter and get it that way because I uh, or whatever. I just I just linked it to you. Oh, you got it to me. Okay, hold on. Let me mm-hmm. let me grab this here. <laughs> Oh my God! What a picture! <laughs> yeah, what a picture! Hold on, chat. We'll get this up for you. Save image as boom, boom. This is where is this? This is absolutely uh, a Gen great Con, picture. Gen Con, probably like ninety-eight or ninety-nine, something like that. Man, you were just a baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you were just a baby. I was about baby. 30 pounds heavier, too. That's a baby winter right here. A baby winter. With the man, the myth, the legend himself right there. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I, didn't, I, don't often, I didn't often go for like handshakes or autographs or anything like that at conventions, but I got, got one there. Yeah, you have to. Uh, I loved, uh, loved Batman. Yeah, my brother Havoc and I, like that's that was one of our favorite cartoons. The, the, you know, the animated series. And then I had to introduce mm-hmm. my kids to it and... Oh, so good. So good. Then then you go back and watch it and you're like, there's a lot of lines I didn't get as a kid. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of cartoons do that, right? But like you go back and you're like, wow, there were actually a lot in this one. If you love the if you love the style too, the same animation studio did uh Big O, the anime. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why it's very it's got a very similar look to it. Oh, gotcha, so. gotcha. Nice. Look at that picture. Look at that. What a what a guy. What a guy. Baby Jason. Baby yep. Jason. Kevin, Kevin's got like a Starbucks coffee there or something. I just noticed too. I, I would oh feel God. remiss, Jason, if I didn't have you on the show and bring up Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines too. Uh, it just feels like that's our thing now. That's become Jason and Mike. It's still number thing. one on my wish list. Right. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah, it the Paradox is. CEO says that a, a, a 2023 launch is, quote, absolutely not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's absolutely not impossible that I could sprout wings and fly away, too, you know? Yes, Mark Hamill was the Joker's voice in the animated series. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, and in the Arkham games. Uh, yeah, he says, and this is uh, with an interview uh, with Pravata Afare. Uh, I would uh, a Swedish website. He says that the company will probably be able to set a launch date for this game reasonably soon, and called a 2023 launch absolutely not impossible. So, uh, Troy, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 2024. <laughs> yeah, 2024. <laughs> no, not impossible you... means yeah, we could do it, but uh, whenever we really get closer to time, it's going to be turned into more like no, nah, we can't really get that <laughs> squeezed in there. I can't believe you guys. I can't believe you would think this game would come out in 2024. It's going to be at least 25. <laughs> <laughs> at least. It's the eternal optimist in us. It, it's the next, uh, what was it, what were we talking? Isn't there something on this list we're going to talk about? Or, uh, yeah, there's yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 next, next topic. Yep, they're still <laughs> making Bloodlines. And Ubisoft would like you to know that they are still making the Prince of Persia remake. What isn't Ubisoft making? Despite the fact that they have not provided updates and fully refunded all pre-orders. <laughs> but they, they, they're they not canceling it. They're not canceling it. It's definitely not canceled. That's what they say. It's definitely not canceled, but all pre-orders have been canceled and money refunded. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say... It's definitely canceled. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, this is the one that was like pushing the boundaries of like PS3 graphically, wasn't it? <laughs> like a remake that looks like it belongs on a PS3. Oh my goodness. 
Ubisoft get canceling and developing, just not releasing a lot. Uh, this is not I, the cancel culture we want with Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is it, it canceled, but not, but but not. I I don't think that's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's coming. They need to concentrate on Skull and Bones. Oh god. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> or what about like I haven't I haven't followed uh, MMO Bomb as much. But what about all the other games they're working on? X Defiant and uh, uh-huh. the other crap. Well, X Defiant is is gone. I think no. One of them was Roller Champions still going. Is Roller Champions still is still going. There was a rumor it was closing down that we reported on, and then, I remember that. Yeah. I think I was here. That was like last year. Yeah. I think. yeah. Um, X Defiant. I think X Defiant was canceled actually. <laughs> we can't even keep track of all these games they put out. We we know hyper hypersphere or hyperspace. What hyper? What was it again? Oh no, guy. it wasn't canceled. That's the one that uh they they took the Tom Clancy name off of. Was right, was right. X Defiant? They canceled the they other another, one. There was another, another oh, Heartland. The Division Heartland. That's yeah, that's coming. That's the Division stuff is coming still. And then that's what I said. What, quote was it, unquote what is coming. Ubisoft still working on. Yeah, they canceled the Ghost Recon base battle royale. Uh, they canceled that okay. one. Yeah. So good old Ubisoft. Was, I, I, I can't keep Get ready for Skull and Bones, everybody. Yeah. Sail the high seas. Let's go and do games of the week and call it a day. Lion is the one that they took Con- Tom Clancy's name off of. The Ghost Recon uh, Battle Royale is the one that was flat out canceled. Uh, this is Games of the Week here on ReadyCheckRadio.com. This is where all three of us are about to give you a game. Could be a video game, board game, card game, mobile game, something we're playing now, played in the past, haven't played, but think you should play. And in the comments below, along with your game award predictions, you let us know who gave the best recommendation. I got to go first because I don't want Troy to give mine away. It's Warhammer Dark Tide. I mean, it's just it's Dark Tide. You, it's fun. It's fun. It's messy. It's Warhammer. It's dark. It's gritty. You smash things with a shovel and maggots come flying out of them. Some of the monsters are incredible. Manage your ammo because it's not a free gun fest. Uh, in fact, there is one mission, Troy, that I just have not once gotten a group to kill the boss. Like, just I failed it every time. I'm loving it. And, and that's on, you know, tension one uh, when we're, we're low levels still. Absolutely enjoying it. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide can't give you like full review impressions until the 30th under embargo to tell you that it's an x out of 10 but go play it go ahead troy <laughs> go play it the man says uh i'm gonna do something a little different than warhammer dark tide uh it's a limited time offer do you like free i like free Free on the place where you visit your games in jail, the Epic Game Store, is Evil Dead the Game. Yeah. It's free until the 24th. Uh, now's your chance to go over and grab the base game for free and try it out. Uh, we've got a first look over it over on MMOBomb.com. I did it myself. It's a fantastic game, a hell of a lot of fun, asymmetric game uh, where some of you are trying to kill the dead. And then there's the one guy playing the the evil, and he's running around trying to take out the survivors. Uh, it's a heck of a fun game, and it, the base game is for free, absolutely free. Normally, like forty bucks over on the Epic Game Store right now. And if you end up picking up any of the the DLC, like there is uh, now Army of Darkness stuff and characters and maps and locations added to it too. So mm-hmm. if you like asymmetrical gameplay and you're into Evil Dead, Bruce Campbell does the voice. I mean, it's tremendous, groovy baby. What do you want? What do you want to uh, recommend, Jason? game came out what like five months ago and they already have to take epic's money to go free on their well shop. it's an epic exclusive so they're going to do whatever the hell they want with it yeah well, yeah but it, you know epic gives them money to do the stuff so it's like we didn't sell enough so let's, let's see if daddy epic will bail us out <laughs> anyway uh, i'm gonna give my my vote to planet crafter which is a game i played uh last week streamed it on uh, on my stream got through about 30 hours of it it's a game where you start on this completely dead barren rock a uh, red rocky mars type thing and eventually, over time, you convert it into a nice, beautiful, green, lush habitat with all your uh, little buildings. And you make you have insects, and you have grass, you have flowers. It's still in early access, which is amazing that I like it, even though it's an early access game. But it's got like 96% overwhelmingly positive reviews. So it's really good. And it's, it's a nice little experience where you just watch your planet grow. It's like a little... Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's like it's like it's sort of like a city building game, just with your little outposts, and whatever. But it's just a nice little way to. It's nice and relaxing for the most part. 
just make it all make everything look nice. It's great to see how your planet comes along as you're uh, developing it. There's your three recommendations. Let us know in the comments who gave the best one. Remember, no shows next week uh, at all. We won't have the Relic Grind on Thursday. We won't have Gaming Gumbo on Saturday. Uh, anybody that uh, is wants to stream of, uh, on their normally scheduled days, of course, certainly can. But if they don't, th that's fine. You know, you, you may not see all the streamers. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not going to be able to do Final Fantasy TCG on Monday. I assume Faye won't be there since she streams on Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll see what happens Saturday night. But we will be back the following week. Uh, following week. Hope you have a wonderful holiday, wonderful Thanksgiving. Until then, Troy, where can everybody find you? Hey, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash noobfridge. <laughs> You're not giving the Twitter anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I can either start now or I can wait till it dies. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. It's not gonna. Still find it's not gonna Twitter. die. It's just gonna turn into an MMO, like where nobody, like Draw Strife Hayes tweeted. He was like, "It's not gonna die," and I don't think it is either. It'll just slowly peter out over the next dozen years. Uh, he's like, "It'll it'll turn into an MMO. It'll slowly peter out into a maintenance mode seven years from now, and then Gamigo will buy it." <laughs> 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 Credit to Josh Strife yeah. Hayes for that line. Go ahead, Jason. I mean, pretty soon you'll be able to buy it. You got like a buck fifty or something. Hang All on, right. that's what it's gonna be worth. Uh, you can stop following Troy and instead follow me and on Twitter at Winter Informal. Then <laughs> he's and, like, uh, "Don't I'll... just follow me. Go unfollow Troy." I mean, he doesn't want to be on Twitter me. anymore. So <laughs> give me all your give me all his follows uh, <laughs> at Winter Informal and streaming at twitchtv slash Winter. most every weekday afternoon. Always fun having you. Go check out Jason's stream. He's been having a blast doing some stuff there. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio, and you'll know every time we go live, which will be very little this next week. Happy holidays. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Yeah.